Okay, so I am so excited for this call tonight. My sweet friend Marisa and I met in the fall and we went to this very intensive personal development, discover yourself type of thing. And um, nobody really knew each other. I mean, I knew Megan, I knew a couple of people, but you didn't know anybody's backgrounds. You just kind of jumped into it with each other. And then you start meeting people that you you like feel like you know, right? On a deeper level and you know what, figure out what they do for work. And I'm just like, then you just get blown away by all the things that all these people are who are around you have accomplished. Um, one of those people was Jeff Griffin, who we've had on a team call, and then he was just our speaker over the weekend at base camp. And another one of these beautiful humans is Marisa, and she is a powerhouse woman. I mean, that is like an understatement of the century. My husband just went to a mastermind and I was like, she's going to be there. She's going to be there. Go find her, go talk to her. So they're now friends. Um, but I'm so excited that she is coming on to talk to us. Her thing, I mean, I'm going to read her bio so that you can kind of have an understanding of this beautiful lady, right? Okay. I, you're like, no, but I'm totally reading it because you are um, just a powerhouse. So Let's jump into it. So she began, Marisa began her career in technology and in the technology industry while studying engineering, liberal studies and business in college. Early on in her education, she had the opportunity to participate in a science scholar program at the San Diego Supercomputer Center at UCSD. The program was sponsored by the National Science Foundation and allowed her to explore opportunities in science, mathematics, art and the internet, loving, lovingly referred to in the early days as the World Wide Web. Her work focuses on clients and businesses with dynamic environments where she utilizes her technical and industry knowledge and cross-functional capabilities to deliver a 360-degree approach to strategy, business development, processing, and marketing. As a strategist, her work with global brands, global brands, like literal global brands, businesses, and influencers revolves around creating and executing successful plans for key initiatives and brand awareness. As a, fractionable, as a fractional resource, she provides operational oversight for newly funded startups or companies. Oh, bleh, 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 sorry. Okay. Oh, there we go. Seeking to improve brand recognition in niche markets via targeting relationship strategies. She has always had the gift of gap and enjoys evangelizing products services, and companies that she believes in. As a speaker, her goal is simple, inspire action, create conversation, and leave an audience with the desire to take the next step. So her daily mantra in life is challenging and life and work is challenge accepted. So I'm excited for her to just come on here. She is the ultimate businesswoman, and she's going to talk about how regular moms can jump into conversation and kind of make that all simple. Yeah. Thanks, girl. Thanks for having me, Sarah. I appreciate it. I'm so excited to be here. Sorry, I just flew in from Utah. Oh, yeah, so. she had that. That's fine. I give it to her. I'm bedraggled. <laughs> so, um, well, first things first, ladies. I um, I love the the topic of the evening, which is like how to start conversations without being a weirdo. I think that's like right up my jam. And I want to like put it out there. Number one, first of all, I love my Zaya. It's like the only way that keeps me warm when I come to Utah. And number two, the, the thing is, is that I'm also a mom and I'm a wife. I have two teenagers and I travel and I have to start conversations with strangers in person and the internet all the time. And I think if if anyone can relate to this, if you're not used to being the person that's like starting conversations, it can feel really awkward. And so I, I don't know if you remember this, if you were a kid, um, does anybody remember like doing jump rope, right? Like, so you would do jump rope and you can put in the, you can put in the comments questions as they come up too. But if you remember doing jump rope and you would wait for that moment, that perfect moment to jump in so you could start jumping. And sometimes it like took a couple times for it to work. Well, that's kind of how it works in person and on the internet. And so the, the reason that I wanted to kind of come in and share some really tactical things that you guys can do is I find that we meet a ton of people in tons of different places, but if you're not open to conversation or if someone doesn't seem open, it may not mean that they're not open. It just means that they're like not used to it. So I find that, that there's a lot of ways to start conversations online and in person that are genuine, authentic, and real. They don't feel slimy and pushy. 
and they just feel like, wow, I'm getting to connect with another human. So I thought instead of giving you like a TED Talk style lecture, I'd give you some really tactical things that you can do as you guys are all growing your businesses and your followings online and in person. And so, do you know, like 80% of the time, people never follow up. So great example, you meet somebody out and about and you want to connect with them. So maybe you guys connect on Instagram and you go on there and you just send a video message. So why do I love video messaging? Because it's faster than emailing, it's faster than texting, and it feels super personalized. So one thing that I do typically when I get new followers, or especially when I connect with someone that I've met out and about is, especially like if I get a follow online from someone, is I'll look at their profile and I'll actually just record a 10 second video. Like, hey, Jamie, so nice to meet you today in the airport. This is actually what happened this morning on the plane. So nice to meet you, you know, really looking forward to connecting. Thanks so much for like, I'm so excited to, to see your journey and what's happening. Can you imagine what it would be like if the first time you followed someone on Instagram that you met somewhere, they actually did a video message, what that would feel like? It would feel customized. It wouldn't feel generic. It would feel like, wow, this person took a second to look at what I'm doing and make a personal video. So that's one thing that you can do that's really easy um, and really personal, right? The second thing is you're trying to find common ground. And I think sometimes we're all trying to find common ground with people and like, you know, and sometimes it's going to be silly, but look at what, obviously what someone's wearing, right? Look at the outfit, see if there's any similarities there. But a lot of times you can start whether I've been like, oh, it's been one of those days or just asking someone, how are you, right? And so I have this all the time. Whenever I come to Utah, I go to Swig, like I'm addicted, terrible for me, but I do it anyway. And I'll go and I'll always be like, hey, what's the latest flavor? What's the thing I should be trying? And I think maybe it's because I actually am genuinely excited to know what's new and what I should try. And I have a list of all the ones that I've tried. I love how the staff responds to me because they're all about like how, oh, okay, like you should try this, you should try this. So what I find is asking questions, you know, when in doubt, ask a question, right? So if you're like, how do I not sound like a weirdo? You're gonna ask people questions that end in numbers, right? So, oh my gosh, how long have you lived in this neighborhood? X amount of years, oh my gosh, you're married? Oh my God, how long have you been married? How many kids do you have? So if you're not used to starting conversations, don't set the bar super high and ask a really deep conversation, ask something light. Right. Like I think a lot of times we overthink how we're going to approach someone. We have our thinking face on. And so we look angry and we're going to approach someone and that energy is off. So if you look at like, how can I establish rapport with someone, which is what you want to do, right? People buy from people. They what? What, are, what? Why do people buy from people? They know, they like, they trust, they want to learn more. They're really excited to be in your, your ether, right? They want to be near you. So again, you're going to ask questions, right? To, to do all kinds of things. So what I would encourage you guys to do is in the process, sorry about that. That's my children. This is what parenting remotely looks like. Um, <laughs> Mom, can I go to the store? Yes. Back to the conversation at hand. You just, just start the, start thinking of your questions. Like some people, like for me, I'm an ambivert, which means that in business situations, I have to try a lot harder to connect with bigger groups, right? Assess where you're strong and where you're weak. If you know, hey, I'm kind of an introvert, so this feels really weird, then you don't want to ask some crazy outlandish question. What you want to do is rapport building questions, right? Leading questions like, oh, how's your day going today? Or you're looking at someone and you can see, oh, you guys, the same thing in Target. Like I start conversations more in line at a Costco than I care to admit. But most of the time, by the time we've left the Costco, we figured out, oh, this person's in this industry. I'm in this industry. We should connect and collaborate. And so I think part of it too is adjusting ourselves as we go out into the world in person and online and saying, hey, like, am I open? And I can tell you, maybe you are, or maybe you aren't, right? So headphones on, is that open or closed? It's closed, right? I go to the gym begrudgingly and I have my headphones. What does that tell people? Don't talk to me. Don't make, don't even like look at me. Right. So I think sometimes we have to consider what are the signals that we're giving? So yeah, it may be awkward to start a conversation, but what are the quick things that we can do in our own attitude checks to be like, Hey, are we actually open? Are we have, you know, and so subconsciously, right? So one of my friends is this incredible FBI negotiation expert. And she always talks about how women, we tend to have our shoulders forward. Forward means you're in a protected state. So a couple of things that you can do before you get ready to do this. Now, this is a trick that really big speakers, uh, celebrities, tons of people use before they go into a room. Have you ever seen someone on a red carpet, maybe on TikTok and Instagram, you're like, wow, they look so confident. 
what they actually do before they go down the red carpet is they take a breath and they imagine themselves owning that space. So this is going to feel really funny and silly, but I'm going to encourage all of you to try this in the next 48 hours because I think you guys will all benefit from it. Next time we're going to Target, right? Or wherever you're going to go, whatever store, TJ Maxx, maybe it's a lazy day. I don't know. Maybe you're going to go roam around. You're going to sit in your car and you're going to think about like, I'm going to walk into this space and I am going to own this space. And I want you to visualize all four corners of that space. And that is your space and you are on. And it's going to feel weird and unnatural. And just remember, you're going to say to yourself, I am open. People love starting conversations with me. People love talking to me. I am a magnet for attention and success. You're just going to make whatever affirmations feel good in your body. You're going to close the door of your car and you're going to go into that space. And from the minute you enter that space, you're going to make eye contact. This is a great exercise with every person that you encounter in that space. Okay. So person that comes in, you see the staff there, maybe they look tired and sad. What you're going to do is you're going to look at them and say, good morning or good afternoon. And you're going to notice that the energy that you give is the energy that you're going to get. So if I go into a space and I go morning, that's not great energy, right? So it's almost like you're in a play. Trust me when I tell you the first time you do this, you're going to feel like a weirdo, but the thing is no one's going to think you're a weirdo. They're going to be like, wow, she's what's, what's going on with her. And, and you're going to find that all of a sudden, as you're walking through the store, trying on shoes, looking at new hair products, whatever it is you're doing, people are going to look at you and engage with you because you set the stage before you went into that space that you are open and that you are a magnet. And I say this to people because you don't even know how powerful you are, but most of the time, the signals that we send to people on the internet and in person are, don't talk to me, leave me alone. How many of you guys are guilty of that? You can write that in the chat if you want or shoot me a DM. It's like, this is a non-judgmental space. So the reason I give that exercise is because you don't have to be a supermodel to have confidence. Uh, I am a larger woman, as Sarah knows, and I walk into places and I I truly feel it. And in the beginning, I felt so weird because this was what my coach told me to do. And I said, I don't know that I'm comfortable. And I had to get really comfortable because I was traveling like 270 days a year for the first three years. I was a speaker for Google. And they said, you're going to have to own a room of 5,000 people or 10,000 people when you speak. And I went, I'm an engineer. You want me to talk to people? And I said, this is the practice that you're going to do. And what I found is that I wasn't closed. I wasn't open. I was very closed. My body language was closed and protected. I wasn't comfortable looking at people. And I said, but I'm an introvert. And they said, no excuses. You can do this. And once I rewired, once I took a second and said, you know, consciously, I'm going to walk into a space and I'm going to be a magnet and I'm going to communicate and I'm going to be open. What you'll actually find is that people will just start talking to you for no reason at all. You don't even have to start the conversation. They'll find an excuse to talk to you. So they'll either comment and I, this happens every single time. They'll either comment on your hair, the sweater, the color of your purse, the bag. They'll start the conversation with you. And how much funner is it to set the stage to have people coming to talk to you instead of the other way around, right? So that exercise you can do in any space, but it's really just mentally preparing yourself. And I think we really discount the fact too, that if you're not comfortable, like being on camera, You guys are in an industry where everyone is very public facing, right? You guys are putting stuff on social media. You're trying to engage with people. You want people to get to know the different sides of what you're doing. So the best way to do that is to project that when you're talking about. If you're not comfortable on camera, tell people, I'm not comfortable and I'm getting better. People will always be supportive. They'll want to engage. They'll want to offer suggestions. If you get stuck as you're trying to communicate with people online and posting, maybe you've got a new drop or something that's coming out, How ask questions. How would you guys talk about this? How would you do that? Everyone wants to give you advice. Everyone wants to give you their input and everyone wants to be able to architect a conversation of some type. That's what everyone's searching for. You know, I, I often joke, I live in San Diego, California, And right across from where we live um, by the ocean is this really, really big, you know, coffee shop. And I always joke that everyone is there alone together, right? Everyone's in there. Everyone has headphones on. They could all work at home, but they're not. Why are they all in that space? Because they want connection. And that's actually what everybody wants, but they're scared to do it. And so I believe that when you're building something, even though things are not comfortable and may not come natural, you can practice. 
you can practice things like this in silly ways and spaces and it becomes more comfortable. It is not a normal thing, just to be clear. Like I sit on airplanes and every time I sit on a plane, people talk to me. That's not normal, but that's just because I'm open, right? I've kind of wired myself to be like, all right, let's see what happens here. And that's how I've met actually a lot of the clients I was sitting next to actually today, a baseball player, an active baseball player had no idea. He started talking to me. I was working on my laptop. He saw that I was putting some notes together for the conversation tonight. And he goes, Hey, I'm trying to learn how to be better at public speaking. I feel like I mumble in interviews. And so I said, Oh, like, you know, there's a, there's an exercise you can do to own the room, share that same exercise with him. And then he sent me a thing. He did a, an appearance today. And he said, you know, I did that thing. And he said, it's the first time I was able to look at the audience the whole time and not look down. So I think sometimes we don't think about our subconscious body language and what happens is we feel weird, right? Like, doesn't it feel weird if you were, if you were just to go up to someone and be like, Hey, how you doing? It would feel awkward. But if you truly believed, hey, I want to know how this person is, or hey, I want to start a conversation, you can do it. And so what I think is really funny is, you know, Paige talked about her resting face. Yeah, my resting face is horrific, right? Like, I almost have to remind myself, like, face. And me and my other, you know, colleague, we do this all the time when we're on Zoom. She'll be like, face. Like, she just sent me a text that was like, face. I'm like, oh, I had my serious focus talk face on, right? So I think it's really important. You have to know what are your, you know, I, I can't do much about my face, but I can have awareness that, oh, I might, I might look kind of closed. Or when I'm thinking, does anybody have thinking face? Where you're thinking about all, I mean, let's, let's be honest. How many times are we all running lists? Like we're here right now, but we're also thinking about what, like all the stuff we have to do. Do we have to put kids to bed? Do we have to do laundry? Are there soccer uniforms that need to go to school? Like whatever the, the things are. And so because we're running lists, our, our brows furrow, right? So it's just a reminder to pay attention to your body and pay attention to what happens in your body. When you start a conversation with somebody, do you get flushed? Do you get hot? Does your heart beat faster? Do you feel uncomfortable? And then realize like, okay, this is just my body experiencing something new. And if you keep doing it over and over again, it'll become natural. So yeah, the first one or two times you start a conversation, right? You're going to be like, uh, uh, but let me tell you, I mean, beautiful things happen when you start from a place of, I want to be a student. I'm a believer that we are lifelong learners. We can always learn to do things better. We can always study up and ask questions. And we have to be willing to put ourselves out there in the pursuit of our goals and dreams. And I know that every one of you that is on this call right now is participating in creating your goals and dreams. Am I right? You guys are focused on building things for yourself. And why are you doing it? Are you doing it for fun? Well, yeah, a little bit for fun, right? But why else are you doing it? So if you go in there with this mindset of, I am connecting with people because I am on a mission and I have a vision, right, to grow myself and my business to its highest potential. And every person that I talk to is an opportunity to have a conversation. And so what you need to make sure is when you have these conversations, you're not in a transactional mindset. So here's the biggest mistake that I see in the industry. And I've had the opportunity to work with, I can't say the names, but, but six very large organizations in kind of the similar space, but more on the, the fitness and nutrition side. The biggest mistake is that we have what are called one-sided conversations. Have you ever been in a one-sided conversation where someone's asking you questions, but they don't really want to know the answers and they just want you to finish so they can talk about the thing that they want to talk to you about? And, and what does that energy feel like in your body when you're in that? It feels kind of gross, right? They're just like, this person does not care. They're kind of looking over your shoulder. They're trying to talk to you. They're, or you just feel like icky like one-sided text messages. So what we have to remember is that we're not having, yeah, it feels icky, it's intrusive, perfect, right? So what we're remembering is that in the process of creating content for online distribution, right? You're doing your Instagram reels or your TikTok or whatever it is you're doing there, or in person, we are not talking at people. We are having conversations with them. We are trying to be more interested than interesting. I think a lot of people forget that. I think a lot of people want to be like the most interesting person. And what they realize is like, people want to talk about themselves. So let them, you will learn 10,000 times more by listening to what someone has to say than throwing up all the reasons that you're awesome. And a really dear friend of mine, um, who Sarah Anderson knows, Sarah Pugh, right? She also is a, is a 
She's sold more than $45 million in her career across multiple industries. And the biggest thing that she taught me, because she's one of my sales mentors, is she said, listen, be more interested than interesting. Listen to what people are saying. Listen to what they're not saying. Like, so what I thought was really interesting about that is I asked another friend of mine, um, for those of you, have you guys ever heard of Chris Voss? Uh, Never Split the Difference. It's a great book, right? So we were just at Sundance with him. I want to say it was two weeks ago. I was just here. And what I thought was really interesting is this concept that he has called tactical empathy. Has anybody ever heard of this? Tactical empathy. So, and I wrote this down specifically knowing that I was going to come in. And what I thought was really interesting that I would share with you is it all has to do with influence. And it has to do with understand that you're not taking away anything from somebody, but what are you, what are you giving them essentially? And the idea is most of the time we speak to people with the idea that we want to tell them about this great thing that we're doing. And instead of taking a moment to listen, and instead of taking a moment to truly be actively participating in the conversation, we're focused on our own agenda. When we focus on our own agenda, it feels icky. When people can be understood, they are willing to be influenced, number one. So when people are, can, can be, uh, when people can be understood, they're willing to be influenced. And I want you to, to remember, this is the second thing that he said. People feel threatened when they feel you are trying to take something away from them. So how many of times have we thought, oh my gosh, I'm sharing this. And, we, and looking back in that conversation as we're talking right now, you're realizing, oh my God, I was talking at them. I wasn't talking with them. I was treating them that they were like a number. Like I wasn't thinking of them like a person. I wasn't looking at them as a mom, a sister, a friend. I wasn't looking at them like, oh, you have the potential to join this cool thing. I was just throwing up all these facts. And so sometimes, especially if anyone is guilty of being a little analytical, we're going to go too much into the facts and stats. And depending on the type of person that you're meeting with, that's not going to resonate. So if you meet someone and they talk about like feelings or they're light and fluffy, talking to them about data and metrics and all that stuff, there's like, they don't want to know, right? Show me a spreadsheet. I'm not interested, right? But if you're talking to someone and they're talking about categories that make sense and you're like, oh, okay, so what I'm hearing this person say is that they're open. They're open to possibilities. They're trying new things. They're let them lead that conversation. And what you'll find, right, is that they're going to tell you everything. All you need to do is just kind of like sit and take notes like, oh, okay, so she works full time. Oh, okay. Like, okay, she's, she's doing a lot of stuff. Oh, but her sister, okay. Her sister has time. She's at home or she's getting divorced or people are just going to tell you things. And you know why? Because when you're actively listening in a conversation, they feel really understood. They don't feel judged. I think as women, sometimes how many of you guys have ever felt judged by another woman? right? Like we, we <laughs> guilty, right? Like I feel like we, we get in that, that, that game of like this person's judging me when it comes to communication and communication with strangers, this is how you go into it. I understand this. And I call it my first thought theory. We are not responsible for the first thought that we have when we meet somebody. So we've all had this, right? Where we've met somebody and we've just thought, oh, like she's high maintenance. She's this, she's this, right? That's when your second thought can take over. The first thought is that reptilian part of your brain. The second thought is, okay, I'm not going to judge this person. I'm just going to engage and see where it goes. And when you don't have an agenda, then you're not steering the conversation. It's just happening. So imagine what it would look like knowing that 80% of contacts and introductions are never followed up with. If you did your target moment, if you did your TJ Maxx moment or wherever it was that you were at and you met somebody and then you continued the conversation. Or if when you met someone on Instagram or TikTok, you followed them back and you commented on some other stuff. These little gestures go such a big way in the, in the space, but also making it really easy for people to engage with you. So the top thing that we, we often talk about is like, how do I get people to start a conversation with me so I don't have to start it with them? There's a great company. Um, have you guys ever heard of a company called Skin It? Skin It creates these really kick butt laptop stickers that you can put at the back of your laptop. So even if you're just stopping someplace to do a little work outside of the home, think of like the back of your laptop cover as a billboard. People will start a conversation with you. My, my um, laptop on the back has a picture of my dogs, my children, a really funny 
uh, quote. I mean, the quote is like, I, I like long romantic walks to the bank. Um, and then it's got like logos of all the client companies I work with and people will start conversations. So if you don't want to actively, if you're like, ah, I'm still not comfortable starting, okay, figure out a way to have people engage with you, right? So that laptop sticker from Skin It, same thing on your phone. There's tons of ways to encourage conversation passively, but then what you do with that is really important. And I think we forget to follow up. We forget to reconnect with people. We just assume if they're not interested now, we forget to nurture them later. And so I think you always have to have a list of people that you're following up with. I do this as well, right? So, you know, great example, like the queen of follow-up is Megan. Megan said, hey, I want you to come to this thing and talk. And I was like, okay. And like, she would build rapport and send messages and be like, hey, but like, you want to do this talk? And I think she asked me about four times and I said, okay. Like, and I had never had anyone be so persistent, but she's like a great, you know, example of that. But I think also if that's not your style, you've got to find a follow-up method that works for you. You can't always copy someone else's style because it will not feel natural to you. So I recommend, you know, essentially like, I don't know if you guys like audiobooks or, or books of that nature. I love, um, there's a book called Influence, The Psychology of Persuasion. And it just talks about different ways that people can be influenced. So a great example would be, my children have read the book, so they use this on me all the time. I'll say, hey mom, can I have 200 bucks? I want to go to the mall with my friends. And I'll say, whoa, whoa, whoa 200 bucks. I was like, no, like, what are, what are you getting? And my daughter will say, well, you know, we were going to go do this and this. And she's like, well, actually, you know what? I think, you know, maybe I'll just go to Starbucks with my friends. Can you lend me 20 bucks? I'm like, oh, sure. She's conned me, right? Because she set the goal of the 200 bucks. And then the real ask was the 20 bucks to go to Starbucks with her friends. So what you start to learn is what are the levers of persuasion that work for different types of people? Now, the goal here is not manipulation. So I want to make it really clear. Like, I think there's this muddy line and people talk about, well, isn't influence and all of this stuff manipulate? No, I am not manipulating people into anything. We are just having conversations. We are being open. We're dropping the things that work for us in our conversation about how we're growing our businesses or what we're doing, right? And I think it's really important to understand that you're in an outward position where you're in sales. Sales is not a dirty word. I believe that sales is one of the, like best professions on the planet. It is the opportunity to be of service to people that want what you have, right? And if they don't want what you have, that's cool. But guess what? They probably know someone that does. <laughs> Nine times out of 10, we don't even make that ask. Hey, do you know anybody else that might be interested? We're scared to ask that question. You know why we're scared? Is because they might say what? They might say no. So how many of you are afraid to hear no? Got a couple of DMs. I'm afraid to hear no rejection. Okay, so so <laughs> to the brave souls that DM'd me, okay, no is not a bad thing. And here's a great exercise of how we're gonna shift energy around now, okay? Rejection in any way, just, it doesn't feel good, right? But, it, but we gotta do it. We have to have the questions and we have to ask. When we talk to people, I want you to think about this. What if you were 15 no's away from the woman that ran a group that had access to thousands of women that you could be connecting with? What if you were 15 no's away? How excited would you be to get your first no? How excited would you be to get your eighth no? How excited would you be to get your 14th no? You'd be like, yeah, I'm one away from the big thing. So what you have to understand is it's like a no is just a not right now. And that's cool. And you don't have to be pushy, but I think it's okay to connect with people. And there's tons of ways, by the way, when we're starting conversations with people and you guys know this, right? There's a Facebook group for just about everything. There's an association for just about anything. There's an association of hairdressers. There's an association of funeral directors. There's an, there is an association for anything you could think of, right? I mean, there's a, a nail tech association. There's all kinds of different associations. And so I think it's the most exciting time because most people are not looking at Facebook this way. We're looking at things this way. We, we think so binary. What we don't think about is what are all the associations or the characteristics of people that we want to connect with? And is there a group on Facebook that has them? Because there probably is, right? I'm in this really big group. I don't know if any of you have heard of it called Women Helping Women. I don't know if you've heard that group. It's like over half a million women, right? Did you know that that group has separate subgroups per state? 
So you can find out they have multiple, I want to say they have 30 or 40 spinoff groups that are state specific. So you can branch off if the, if the big group of half a million women is too much for you, you can go into the other groups. And what you'll find is there's even, um, I know that like in San Diego, we have a side, like a single mom side hustle group where all it is, is women looking for opportunities and business opportunities. So, and if there isn't one, start your own, right? Like, I think it's really important to understand that when we're meeting people, you got to collect them somewhere. And there, it's just more of an awareness, right? You just want to be on the radar. You want to be thought of, you want to be, you want to be there, right? Um, and I think when we're having conversations too, it's, it's okay to not be perfect on social. Like I'm the queen of living my brand. So if you go to my Instagram and you look at it, it is like the formula is, has been the same for, oh my God, since I got on Instagram, since it was invented. And it's like, I show a little bit of my life as a mom. I show my life as a wife. I show work. I show my travel. And if you look at it, you can actually look at the grid and that's, that's all it is. Um, sometimes I look really great and made up and other times I look like I just rolled out of a trash can, but it's real, right? And people love the real as much as they love when you're glammed up, they love getting to connect with you. And so what makes you uniquely you is number one, your ability to articulate whatever it is your value prop is and the vibe you're bringing, right? The two is just being inclusive and welcoming, right? And I think when it, when it comes to having conversations with strangers, like, you know, I've had to talk to a group of 10 as much as I've had a group to, you know, talk to a group of 10,000. The biggest compliment when I get in front of a group of 10,000 people is like, oh, I felt you were talking to me, right? And that's because I genuinely believe when I go out on a stage or when I come to a room, I want to be as much of service to a room as possible. And not even service. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to change that. Contribution. I want to be of contribution. So what's the difference between service and contribution? Does anybody know? So the actual definition of the word service was changed. So if we look back, um, and my friend uh, has like one of these older dictionaries, the actual definition of service, right, had a lot to do with servitude and being a servant, right? So I want you to think about how heavy that feels right now. When you have to be of service to people, does that feel heavy? Does that feel like a very big obligation? Yeah. It does, right? Oh, I have to be of service here and I have to service. And then you feel drained, right? So I'm going to have you do a reframe because our language is so powerful. So I want you to think of like, when you start conversations with strangers online or in person, you're going to be of contribution. How can I be of contribution, right? Whether it's directions or where my sweater is or wherever that is, just think about that, like contribution. And it's such a subtle difference, but our language is very powerful. So now if you think about your teams or people that you're building or people that you're networking with, instead of being like in service to one another, we're in contribution of each other. Are you guys all committed to seeing each other win? My, my guess is yes, right? Are you guys focused on growing your networks and growing your impact and your influence? Yes. By the way, are you growing your income? Yes, right? So all of these things in being of contribution, the language that we use is so important and pay attention to the language that you're using. And if you're not sure what language you're using, ask each other, pick a buddy. Be like, hey, do I say things that sound weird or am I being unintentionally negative? Again, subconscious signals, right? So service and contribution. I like to be of contribution. I'd love to be of contribution. That feels fun to me. That's why I'm here right now because I want to be of contribution to a group of women that want to crush it, right? If I said, oh, I have to do this thing. And it's like, no, I get to do this thing. I get to. And how many times do we say, oh, I have to, I have to, I have to. Right. And then that feels really what burdensome, right? Like, oh, you know, and, and I did it to myself. We should on ourselves a little bit. Right. I got here and I was like, oh, I should unpack. I should do this. I should, you know what I did? The subtle art of nothing. And it was glorious. I just took a moment as a mom. I think you can appreciate 20 minutes of just like, right. So I think the power of our words and the power of how we communicate is really important. And then just pay attention. Like, when you see an opportunity to connect, don't, it's now that no. it's, oh, oh, looks like Regina is, oh my God. I think um, now that I brought this to your attention, you're going to see it. So if you remember, right, like maybe being pregnant or getting a new car and you see pregnant people everywhere, or you see the new car everywhere, right? It's the same thing with what we're talking about right now. Now that I've told you, hey, are you open? And you've made a decision, I'm going to be open. What you're going to find is once you make that decision, people are just going to start talking to you and they're going to do it online and in person. 
And it's going to be weird when it happens. You're like, what is this person's deal? And you're like, oh, I must be showing that I'm open. Um, and I think what's interesting about that is that until you say it out loud and until you bring it into your conscious awareness, you don't know. And that's why I think if you don't acknowledge the obstacle or what's in your way of connecting with people or starting conversations, or you don't acknowledge like, yeah, I'm kind of awkward when I talk to people, then you're not going to be able to fix it. If we can't articulate what we're not good at, then we're not going to know what to fix. We're not going to know what to adjust, right? Have you ever been in conversation with someone and you're just like, something doesn't feel right. And you don't know what it is, but it makes you uneasy. It's because you can tell that they're not being authentic, right? And people can spot a phony, right? People can can feel like this feels not okay, right? And And I think if there's anything that you're taking away from what I'm saying, it's just that conversation and opportunity is everywhere, right? I mean, the statistics are clearly there, right? It, the, the, the entrepreneurial statistics of women, it's like, right? Like women are starting side hustles and businesses like five to one over, over men, right? Um, if we look at the regional population of the different areas, like what we can see is women are looking for ways to generate income. They're looking for other opportunities. They don't even know what's possible. And there's this tide turning where you get to educate people on what it is you do and what you bring to the table. And, and when I talk about being open, I think a lot of people are over, um, they want to make decisions for themselves. Like, so for every person that's not a fan of you or a hater, just know this, like 50% of my following hate follows me. I accept it. I know it. 50% of my following hate follows me. They only follow me because they want to criticize me. They want to talk about why I suck or why I'm not good. They want to pick apart what I say. I am not interested in that. I'm not absorbing that energy. It's not coming into my sphere or my ether. But once you say that out loud and you go, hey, you know what? I'm going to do this stuff and I'm going to record videos. I'm going to connect with people. I'm going to, when someone follows me on Instagram, I'm going to follow them back and do a message. Half the people may love it. Half the people might not. But that's okay because you could be 15 nose away from the yes that you need. And that's a healthy thing to digest. People aren't going to love us all the time. But what I think is exciting is that your resilience and your ability to connect and be open can be truly transformative. And I'll show you an example of how this showed up in my life. Um, eight years ago, I was in a corporate job uh, every day, <laughs> every day, uh, working 15, 16 hour days. And, uh, I was tired all the time. I just, I got up in the morning, you ever get up in the morning and you're like, not today. And I'd hit snooze like five or six times on my alarm clock. And I just wanted nothing to do with my day. And I thought to myself, this is not for me. And I just bounced and I started doing kind of side hustles and, you know, I, I launched into fitness and a couple of other things. And I just was so open to trying and seeing what was out there. And what that led me to understand as I started connecting and meeting with other people is that there's any number of people right now today trying to find their thing and they don't know what to do. They literally have no idea and they're Googling and they're looking stuff up. And so that the second piece of what I want to talk to you about is when people are Googling, Googling and looking you up is, is remembering that like in the era of the internet, you have to tell the internet what to say about you. So if you're not sure, take a moment to Google yourself and see what's out there and ask yourself two very important questions. Are you there? And do you like what you see? And the reason you want to Google yourself is you want to know, okay, if I meet this person and they have my name and number, they're probably going to look me up, right? They're going to find my Instagram, but they might just look me up. So what's out there, right? So there's a really great, and this is kind of where I move into more tools and actionable things that you can use. Um, there's a great tool called Brand Yourself, brandyourself.com. There's a free trial. You put in your name and it just starts looking on the internet and it's going to ask you questions like, is this you? Is this you? Is this not you? So now you can feed the internet exactly what you want it to know. Like you can say, oh, that's not me. Oh, this is me. You can put in your website, your social handles, your links, all the ways that people can get a hold of you so that you can control a little bit more of what people see. Okay. So that's kind of the reputation side of things, right? If you know that there's potentially anything negative out there about your brand, as we know, there's tons of haters everywhere. It's like, we're not catering to them. We're catering to the people that are into us. So tell the internet what you want. 
tell the internet who you are and what you do and how to connect with you. Right. And I, and I did some surveys of some of the people in the, in the room and I was looking at Sarah, like Sarah's got the great link in bio. There's Shoreby. You can use Canva. There's probably uh, 10 or 11 different things that you can use, right. To create a link in bio where someone can engage with you. The reason I like, uh, there's a tool called Shoreby that's very similar to Lincoln Bio is because it has a phone call, like a phone, a messenger and an email link at the top. And then um, I don't know if you guys have ever heard of MailTrack, but that's a free widget. And so if you send an email to someone, you can see if they opened it or not. <laughs> so if you're writing an email and you want to know like, hey, is this person actually getting it? It's totally a free widget. You can add in Gmail. So that's kind of fun too. Here's another fun thing. Um, when you go onto a platform like LinkedIn, where you see a lot of corporate women that, you know, are in transition, they're actually putting in transition in their bios right now. So you could open up LinkedIn right now and do a search for in transition and anyone that's in transition, their bio is going to show up, right? Well, there is a widget called Crystal Knows. And what that does is that looks at how someone's personality is, and it's going to tell you exactly what they would need to know or hear from you in order for them to feel comfortable buying from you. And so I wanted to show you guys that one because I think that is a huge, like, I don't, how many of you guys have used LinkedIn before? A couple of you? No, scary. Yeah, like I love going where I know my buyers are, right? I like going in places where everyone maybe isn't. I like getting this information and this insight. And it's not because I think that, you know, um, and again, I, I think there's tons of different ways. So let me, let me give you an example, right? So I want you to visualize and see this because I think it would be so powerful because what if when you were starting conversations with strangers, you knew exactly how to start these conversations and you knew exactly the word tracks, um, that you need to say, and I can see Paige. I just Googled myself. Yeah. So isn't that great? The fundraisers in your Instagram is what comes up. That is awesome. That is exactly what you'd want. So I'm going to show you this. I think I can show you. I just want to see if I can share the screen. I'm going to try. We're going to try. So let's see. All right. Um, if you can allow me to co-host for favor. <laughs> I just approved it for screen sharing. Cool. Like, 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 for favor. For favor. <laughs> like terrible Hispanic. Like I speak the worst Spanish ever. Um, okay. So I have pulled up like a profile of a friend of mine who's an entrepreneurial woman. So you see this little widget that came up, it's going to tell me a lot about her and it's going to say, Hey, if you're going to talk to her, use a results focused, fast paced, do speak with high energy, use an energetic, assertive tone. Don't do this. Don't be too friendly. It's going to tell you exactly what to say. And it's going to say, Hey, are you trying to prospect her? Or do you want to qualify to see if she's a good fit for you? So then it's going to say, Hey, if you're going to pitch or talk to her, showcase successes, people have had speak with this type of tone. So it's a blueprint on how to look at someone. So what's really cool is you can start to look up different personality types and it's going to say, Hey, like, when building rapport with her, compliment her work ethic, use humor, right? Um, how she's likely to approach a problem. So this gives you some insight as like, if you're going to send a cold email to someone or a cold message to someone, a little bit more about them so that you can be successful. So instead of, instead of trying to guess, you, you have an exact kind of blueprint on how to have that conversation. And when it comes up to having, you know, a conversation about that, it's going to say like, hey, this is the exact email you should use. Hey, like we've seen results, blah, blah, blah. Does this sound like what you want or need or whatever? So it's a, just a blueprint and a widget in a way. And the only reason I wanted to show you that is because for those of you that feel uncomfortable starting these types of conversations, this is a way to kind of get a preview into what the personality is so that you can approach them the right way. And it's not that you're changing who you are. It's just, you're really interested in what's going to work best for them. Right? So if I'm like a super extrovert and I'm going after like someone that, you know, is a great prospect for me, but is a little bit softer in tone, that could be super overwhelming. So I'm just learning the blueprint of how they want to be communicated with. That's the kindest thing that we can do. Um, and I think, you know, for what it's worth, yeah, that's on LinkedIn. So what my favorite thing to do is, is when I find someone that connects with me on Instagram, I'll send them that video message and be like, hey, it's super great to see what you're doing, whatever. And I'll go on LinkedIn and see what they're like, 
what's their day job, right? And usually like the day job will tell you a lot. If it's like a mid-level or entry level, that is a huge room of opportunity because you know that they're not happy. I've never met anybody in customer service or being like an admin that loves it, right? They're always open to an opportunity and that's going to give you that blueprint. So that tool, I believe they give you like 10 free trials. So what you could do is just like the next 10 people that connect with you on Instagram or that you're going to try and connect with, go see if they have a LinkedIn. That tool is basically pulling in their education, their experience, like posts that they've made, all of that stuff. And it's giving you the blueprint on how to connect with them. And so that way, yeah, I think Liz said it. Yeah, you don't feel like awkward. You just have like the blueprint, like, oh, this is cool to know. And it's also good to know too. I mean, I'm sure you guys do tons of different ways, but I'm like obsessed with personality assessments. Like I love color code assessments. I don't know if you guys have ever done the color code, but I love to know like exactly what I am. You know, I, and it's because I know that typically I'm the person that's okay with starting the conversation, but I had to learn this skill. Like, it's not a normal skill for me. I'm an engineer. I like want to hide behind my computer. Right. So that's just, you know, things to keep in mind. It's not natural. So with that, you know, I hope that I gave you at least some things that were helpful. And Sarah, if you want to move into any type of q and I'm super happy to do that. Um, I know I just took two pages of notes. I think that these, <laughs> I talked well, so much. I had a lot of coffee apologies. So I, no, it was so good. In fact, I looked down at the clock when you just said, oh, I'm done. And I'm like, oh, I cannot <laughs> believe it's been 45 minutes. Like that's insane to me because it went so fast. Um, but if anybody put in the chat or you can even unmute, if you guys have a question for her, because she is like this all, this was like this much of what she knows. Like this is this girl, it has so much value. Um, so put in the chat if you have any questions um, while they are doing that. I do have a question. So if you are looking just as your opinion, because this is something that I get a lot um, when people were like, hey, you're, you know, to build, oh, to build a online business or in person, right? It's meet new people, add value, invite them in. And, um, and everyone's like, well, where do we meet new people? And I love that you talked about the Facebook groups. Um, and we forget that there's the in-person stuff, but on Instagram, which I think a lot of people are on, where do you feel like meeting new people or how do you go about doing that on Instagram? Oh, I think you're muted or is it my, no, it was me. Oh, okay, perfect. Hi, welcome to 2023. I can't use zoom. It's all good. Um, I think there's a couple ways to do it. So I try to get really clear with like who my target is. And then I look at their followers. Obviously I'll do that. I'll do hashtag searches. I'll do shared interest searches. So for example, I'm really into audible. Like I like audiobooks. So a lot of times I'll do hashtag searches for audible because people will share books. Like I've met a lot of my business partners on Instagram just by being like, Oh my God, I read that book. Have you read that book? I didn't talk about what I did. They didn't talk about what they did, but eventually over a couple of DMS, we started figuring out, Oh, like we have very similar blah, blah, blah. So I think if you, if you look at like Instagram and TikTok or, or whatever, look at them as search engines, look at them like they're their own mini Googles. And I think a lot of, you know, for what it's worth, a lot of people are severely under leveraging the relationship between Instagram and Pinterest. So like, keep in mind that Pinterest is one of the only platforms where the goal is to get you off the platform. <laughs> so imagine, right, like whatever images or whatever stuff you're putting onto your Instagram, you can duplicate that for Pinterest and then retitle it. And it's going to direct people to your Instagram or your Instagram reels or your TikToks. So again, Pinterest is a visual search engine. It reminds me of like the glory days of Instagram. So if you remember when Instagram first started, it was all about beautiful imagery and all this stuff, right? And what we've discovered is that at a certain point, Instagram was like short form content, short form video, 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 video. But what's happening right now is people are starting to get a little bit of short form video fatigue, which means they're actually willing to watch longer form content, which means like Pinterest to Instagram to, I'm going to say it, don't be scared. YouTube is actually going to be a thing. So like, think about it. How many times have we like sat on our phone and you scroll and you scroll and finally you're like, how many, it's been three hours. What have I been doing? Right. And so what we're seeing is the trend is like people are following creators and they're following them off platform, but understand that like 
knowing that Pinterest is visual and knowing that what you guys do is, is obviously a business opportunity, but also very visual when people are going to that platform for visual, like there's a lot that you can leverage together. And again, you're going to find people with similar interests. You can follow those people. You can contact those people. You can collaborate with those people. And again, what I, what I figure out is what is the closest thing that you, like, what are your hobbies and the things that you love? and marry those things together, right? So I love audiobooks. I love my dogs so much. They're so fun. And I love like Nike shoes, right? So I ended up collaborating with a ton of people that I've just met over Instagram, direct messaging, just commenting back on forth. We start seeing it. It's like, it's like date to marry. We're commenting, all of a sudden we're looking at each other's stories, then we're DMing each other, then we end up collaborating. So it's not going to happen instantly. And I think that's, it's like a lot of times we give up before the miracle happens. A relationship is not built in a one minute DM. A relationship might take a couple of days or a couple of hours or a couple of interactions. You know, on average, it's eight to 10 interactions. So eight to 10 interactions to get to a conversation. So don't get like disheartened if, if someone doesn't immediately think you're like the bee's knees, right? It's going to take eight to 10 interactions for them to kind of be like, okay, and then go from there. So, and I don't think people look at using hashtags or visual searches in that way, but you know, if you can look up a certain thing that you love, and again, like you might be a, a, a soccer mom, or you might be really like in San Diego, like the Stanley cup just kind of hit California. It's like a new thing out there. Right. So we're obsessed and like, we're all in messages together and we're all collaborating. We're all like, how do we get these things? Right. We met some random lady that just had a bunch of them. But the point is, is like, we built a community around founding this one thing. And there was like 10 of us that couldn't find these cups anywhere. We didn't even know each other. turns out we all live within a mile and a half of one another. So that just went from like, this ooh, big, bad internet to like, oh, this is all, we're all within like a mile and a half of each other. We should all meet up. And we did. So I believe that that's very replicatable. It's cost-effective. You just have to have a tiny bit of patience and don't quit before that miracle happens. <laughs> I think random people just start sharing. Yeah. I mean, feeling awkward and salesy. Yeah. I mean, I think, I think you have to know that like, if you're in this, it's actually okay to be salesy in some ways. Like you, you are in, in sales business and you have to retrain yourself that you are of contribution to those that you meet, right? You're not a salesperson, okay? You are a contributor to this really cool ecosystem. That slight rebrand is gonna make you think differently, right? And, and it's okay, like sales is a noble profession, 1000%. Um, and we don't like, you know, I, I wish that people just recognized me for my brilliance, but you know, at some point I had to put my price in front of someone and, and say it. And I think what's really great about this is this is a skill you can continually sharpen. There's tons and tons of things. And if you're not sure, there is a really, really great book, even on learning how to do your Instagram captions, that's copywriting, right? That's copy. You guys are doing copy. So there's a book called copywriting secrets. It have, was written by the guy, I believe, that did all of the ClickFunnels uh, copy for Russell Brunson. And it's just different things to pay attention to. And I thought I would share this, which is, um, have you ever heard of the reasons why people buy? <laughs> yeah, so I think Sarah's seen this, right? They, they want to save time, avoid effort. They want to get, you know, uh, convenience. They want to feel prestige or aspirational. They want to feel part of something, right? So pretty much what you guys are doing is if you read that book and you see how people write copy, you can actually take that and apply that to your Instagram stories, your captioning, your social media posts. And we don't think about our posts as copy, but it's just as important, if not more effective than a landing page, right? So if you look at that and you go, oh my gosh, Imagine what it would be like if you treated every post that you did like it was a landing page getting them to what they needed to do. You would think differently, right? You'd, you'd be like, oh, okay. That's why people talk about this, but there's a phenomenal tool if you guys haven't heard of it. Um, it's called Quillbot. I don't know if you guys have ever heard of this tool. Quillbot is a AI writer. And so what you can do is you can write, uh, you know, look at like take one of your old captions and you can put it into this thing and you can say, hey, write this a little bit longer. 
write this a little bit more fluent, make this more fun, make this more serious, make this longer, make this short. So it's a way to dabble in using a little bit of an AI tool. There's a free version that you can use and you can try this. So take one of your old, like look at your old um, Instagram posts. If you've got your Instagram set up, look at a post that did really well, grab that copy, throw it into Quillbot and have it rewrite it for you. Why, if it ain't broke, don't fix, you know, like if it's not broken, don't fix it. So just rewrite that copy. And what you'll see is it's probably going to perform really well. So don't be afraid to dabble in the tools and technology that might seem really scary and weird. And like, why would I use this? Because at the end of the day, if you're not as comfortable in front of the camera, then write your copy intentionally so that when you do your videos, it's intentional. There's, there's a thousand ways to get the output that you want. You just have to try kind of this, it's all a buffet of ideas <laughs> and just pick and choose the ones that you think will work and, and stick with them, right? If you go to the gym, you're not going to get abs in a week, right? So you've got to be consistent and you've got to make that commitment that you're going to do it. I don't particularly enjoy making content at all. Most of the time my face is annoyed as I'm doing it because I remembered I had to post for the day, but, but you do it and, and you, you exercise that muscle. So hopefully that tool is really kind of like a fun tool. Like um, if you've never done it, uh, don't let your teenagers see it because they'll use it to write papers and all kinds of fun things. But <laughs> it's not for plagiarism, but you know, it, it'll help you develop some of that copy, copy for yourself. Um, so that's awesome. That's that might be helpful. Because... That, was a long, that was a long answer, but hopefully that helped. No, that was so good. And the, you just saying not let your teenagers do it. it might be helpful as my kid keeps coming home telling me about book reports for books that he's not read a book all year. Apparently he has no idea what to write it on. I'm like, better go figure that out. So he did it on a movie that he saw. Go ask, go ask chat GPT, go ask the AI. It'll tell you it'll be fine. <laughs> I'm going to give him this. So it's not on my yeah. job anymore. Yeah. Oh my gosh. This was all so helpful. And I think it's the reminder sometimes because, uh, it's direct sales and it's network marketing. I think sometimes it can look like a small thing, like, oh, it's just like my small gig. And so sometimes I think people can jump in here and not really take it seriously. And it's like, no, but that's for like the super professional, like all is maybe some of these ideas. And it's not like, this is the kind of an incredible business opportunity that anybody can get into. And if you are willing to take it seriously and put that effort into it and, you know, grow and try and fail and fail and fail and keep going. This can be one of the biggest businesses that you can build in your lifetime. Right. And so, I mean, there's so many out there, but um, it's not small. It can be small and it can be very, very big. So this oh, call tonight. Your, right? Thank you so much. Right. And I, I, just, I just think it's really important that like, you know, they always say like, you can change the world. It just depends on how you define it. I think the question is asking everybody, how do you want to, how do you want to define your world? Right. Is it a small impact? Is it a big impact? It can be whatever you want it to be. Right. And I, it's so awesome. And I have to stop buying stuff. If I'm being honest, like at this point, um, I have so much stuff that I bought for every time I'm here in Utah. It's like so fun. I really appreciated being at Nicole knows, right? Like I have all the jackets, I have all the things, but I, I appreciate you guys allowing me to come into your space and I hope that you got something about it. And you have any questions, just let me know. I, you know, I think the opportunities are all there. It's just, sometimes it's really overwhelming. Like, what do I do? Right. Um, and I thought I would give this one last tool for you, Sarah, and for anybody else that's listening, if you're ever curious and you're trying to figure out how to make content or what content you should make, there's a website called Answer the Public. Um, it's basically, you can put in any topic or category and it'll tell you what people are searching for in real time. And then you can theme your content around these most asked questions. It'll let you do three free looks a day, um, but you could type in everything from like, you know, clothing to whatever topic you want. And it's going to say all the actual search terms that people are looking and then use those exact phrases when you're making your video. So it's kind of cool. I like that. I think you might be the most brilliant woman, like so smart. I'm always like, what do I post? So what do I post? Like, then you can come up with all of these ideas. Like, of course, um, <laughs> where can everybody find you? Like if they were going to follow you. Oh, Nicole's wondering what the, that's called again. Oh, it's called, I'll put it right here. It's called answer the public. 
um, and answer the public. Again, it's going to give you three free searches. It'll allow you to type in any category, topic, whatever. And then it's going to give you all of the things that people are looking for in real time, like in the last 48 hours. Um, and you can find me on Instagram. I'll drop my handle here. It is Marissa SD. Um, and I, yeah, I mean, I answer IG messages and you'll probably get, if you follow me, you'll get a video back because that's what I do. I don't like typing. <laughs> I, don't like, I don't like, I don't like typing. And I don't like email. That's not my strength. So thanks for having me, Sarah. I love it so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for taking time. Now go enjoy that quiet hotel room, order all the food, whatever it is. Um, and we just love you. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. Thank Bye. You. Bye.